Hey guys, it's 681 Shadow. Welcome to my week one battle for the Continental Pokemon Championship. Once again, as you saw in the team builder, which I will link in the description below if you have not checked that out yet. I am facing again I am facing Trev the King, coach of the Atlanta Braviaries. So I'm gonna actually gonna have a question of the day with these series, so just answer those in the comment section below. So the question of the day this seat for um, today will be well actually I'll have two for today, just to make it a bit special. So the first question of the day, they will be linked they will be on that bottom section of the layout. The first question will be what do you think my record, my overall record will be for the regular season? There are going to be 12 weeks in this season, so how, how well do you think I'll do? And second of all, and second question, how do you guys like the intro? Because I worked pretty hard to get that intro done, and I think it turned out well, but I want to know what you guys think. So let me know those the answers to those two things in the comments section below. So for this match, he brought, so for this match, as you saw on Team Builder, I brought the Scarf Heliolisk, because that Barry Head Smash Dawn fan, Lizard Sol Zard X, um, Tail Glow, three attacks leftovers, part a defensive mana fee, um, standard for Althorn, and then Assault Vest, four coverage moves, Smith Brit. Now he brought three of his birds, he brought um, probably the three scary ones out of the four, the other being Archaeops. So he brought Talonflame, Mega Pidgeot, Honchcrow, and then Starmie, Dugtrio, and Klefki. Now the Dugtrio is definitely something to be scared about. That like even in team prep and in this preview, definitely it's going to be something that is ve is going to be very very scary for me to deal with, since um, my Heliolisk pressures a lot of his team, and he could just switch into Dugtrio. So if Dugtrio is around, the pl so if Dugtrio is still around, the play would most likely be to um to be to U-turn to switch into Heliolisk to pressure the birds out and then go for the U-turn. So that's going to be the plan here. Um, for Heliolisk, and then of course I have coverage on Mesprit and Manaphy for the flying types and for Dotrio. So let's actually start the battle. So he leads with the Mega Pidgeot. I lead with my Ferrothorn. I auto I automatically switch out. I switch out right there because of bad lead matchup. He goes for the Hurricane, and that lead matchup that definitely was something that should not have happened. Um, I did not really think it through as much as I should have for the lead matchup, so Manaphy took unnecessary damage which will play a role in the match later on, whereas Manaphy cannot do as much as it could have, but um, anyways, this turn I switch out, I double out into Mesprit, Mesprit will be able to take the Hurricane taking a bit more than a third, and he's going to U-turn right here, he's going to U-turn the Honchro, as I pre as, um as I, pre as I predict him to do, because, well, the type, ma type matchup, Honcho can do really good against Mesprit, and I go for the Thunderbolt, and I'm able to knock it out. So, that is the first, um, that is the first Mon down in the match. So now he goes back into the Mega Pidgeot, and here, I was like, alright, I'll, it was like, alright, um, I don't want anything else to take unnecessary damage, so I'll, um, stack off the Mesprit and go into Heliolisk. So now here he'll switch into his Dugtrio, as I go for the U-turn, because I'm like, that's the obvious fly, he's going to switch into Dugtrio. And I don't want to get trapped with this thing. So now I'm going to go for the Ferrothorn. Now here I make a misplay, going for Leech Seed instead of Gyro Ball. Now the reason why this is a misplay is because is because I could have had more damage on this thing if I went for two Gyro Balls, as you'll see later in the match. I could have this thing would have been down prob this thing would have been down a lot further than I made it. But to continue on the match here, um, he gets stabbed by Leech Seed. Then I switch. Actually, he's he switches into Mega Pidgeot, and I go into my Dawn Fan right here because to try to take on the Town Flame. But I double out because that Dawn Fan doesn't have special bulk, and I don't think I'll be able to take it so well. So I switch back into Heliolisk as we make the same set of plays, going me U turning on the on the Doug Trio, going into Dawn Fan. I mean, not Dawn Fan, uh, for Althorn. And now here I do the and here he goes for Earthquake, and it does negligible damage. But here he's gonna go into the Talon Flame. Yeah, I'm going to Gyro Ball. Now, see, to Gyro Ball th did uh, about 30% to the Talon Flame. So, if I would have Gyro Balled that first turn, it would. Talon Flame would be down to about, like, 40% around there. Well, actually, not really 40%. It'd be, let's see, 30 and 30. Would be, yeah, it would be 40%. Never mind. 
I can math, right? So it was it would be down to like 40 percent, which could have uh, which would have which if I got my rocks up, um, then I would def that would definitely um, just that would just would have gotten rid of the town flame, but um, I would not have to deal as I would not have to deal with that anymore. So it takes 50 percent from rocks. So if I got it under 50 percent, that'd be fine. That'd be really good for me. So now from here. I he with he um predicts my dawn fan switch perfectly and he goes into his starmie and this forces me to double out into my mana fee and to take the hit power and for some reason I forgot in this match that starmie got uh, starmie gets a uh, electric type stab so he's able right here to take me out with a thunderbolt that that's just poor um that's just me being bad on my part but. It is what it is. So we switch into the Heliolisk again. He's gonna switch into the Dug Trio. Oh, you know, he switches to the Klefki. My bad, my bad. He switches to the Klefki. I go for the U-turn to um, get out of there because of the Dug Trio. So I go into this, and with this, what do I go for? I don't exactly remember. Oh, he switches into the Mega Pidgeot, and I go for the Stealth Rock. Yeah, I get the Stealth Rock up here. Now this, now this here. Um. It, he does after this. He, at this point, he does not switch in his Talon Flame anymore because the Stealth Rocks will basically bring it down to seven percent. And judging by him not bringing it in, it probably doesn't have a Roost. So that's a good thing to take. Uh, that w is a good thing to take note of at that point in the battle. If it's not do it, it um, must not have a Roost. If it's not, um, it must not have a Roost if it's not gonna come in anymore after this. The pressure like for Hawthorne. So then here, I go into the Dawn Fan. The Heat Wave does um, over half, so I ha I'm have to force a double out here, and then he gets the Hurricane Crit. Now, sure it would have two coat no matter what, but um, sure it would two coat no matter what. But I think um, po I think it would yeah with two coat no matter, no matter what. But I could have played differently for that. But it's def it was definitely um. A pressuring move, so I I really don't know how it would have went, but Charizard just has to die here. Okay, no, it does not die. I switch it out. It'll die later on in the match, I believe. Yes. Yeah, so then Heliolus takes a lot of damage from that. At this point, it's in my opinion, it's a lost cause. There's no really, really no way to um f to get this match. So I'm trying to get my differential up at, as but to get my differential um as best as possible so now I just get rid of the Doug Trio with the Leech Seed which um, brings me to which brings him down to four mons and then he and I believe I just sack off the Frothorn here yes I just sack it off and go to the Heliolisk and from here I just go for the th Thunderbolt because Doug Trio is gone I can freely Thunderbolt with this thing and Thunderbolt does 30% I think I sack off the Heliolisk here Okay, no, 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 I switch out. Yeah, that makes sense. I sack off the Charizard here as he goes for the Psychic, and that thing goes down. And then I go into the Dawn Fan to get the Earthquake kill. He, yeah, he goes for Spikes to just take out my Heliolisk whenever I switch that thing in. So, that goes down. He goes into Mega Pidgeot, takes out Dawn Fan, and Spikes will take out Helios. So, that is the game. GG to Trev. It was definitely a good match. I definitely could have played better. I know Trev is an exceptional player, so it was definitely is definitely um, really challenging to do well against him. But I'm gl I'm glad I was able to um, get down to three of his mods and Doug Trio really pressured my team in this matchup. It was definitely something that was difficult to, o to difficult to overcome since Helio since it was re um, probably his best way of checking Heliolus outside of like. I don't know, Volt Absorb Lantern or something along those lines. So in so in this so in this match it I definitely gonna help me to improve because I did not because while I was prepping, I over I think I I prepped too much for Talonflame, like his physical birds, but not so much for the special side like for Mega Pidgeot. So that's definitely something I'm going to have to um, compensate for in future battles. I do not face Trev anymore in this season, but if we both make playoffs, that, that's a possibility to face each other. But we will just have to see how it works out because it's definitely it's definitely a rivalry that we kind of had now ever since the Pokemon Masters Cup. How he's always been able to outdo me in every battle, so it's been pretty um, it's been a pretty interesting rivalry but hopefully I can get him I can get him 
at some point. But anyways, good battle. Hopefully we could battle so some other time. So right now I am 0 and 1 with a my I'm 0 and 1 with a minus 3 differential. However, I am second in my division because my other two division members had lost their his two of my division members lost their matches for week one, and then um, and then one of my division members got a 3-0. So that is definitely still good for me because I still I believe I'm still on a wild card. So even though playoffs ending don't really matter for week one, but I'm still second in my division. So next week we faced Aberforth, coach of the Brisbane Brelooms. Um, that's definitely going to be an, inter an interesting matchup to see as he it he was in the NPL, the National Pokeball League minors season, I believe. I believe he was in the minors for um, season four of the National Pokeball League, and then season and now he's in the majors for season five. So I know he's definitely decent competition at the very least. So it will be definitely a good battle. So stay tuned to that. Stay tuned for that next week. Otherwise, that is it for this for week one of the Continental Pokemon Championship. Thank you all for watching. Remember to um, rate, comment, subscribe, share this video, answer the Q, the um, questions of the day or week, as I should probably say, because it's week the weekly battles. And I will see you all next time.